It's that time again. Question time. Are there any older COD campaigns you'd consider playing on the channel? Glad you like watching them. Well, when I was booting up Modern Warfare 2 to record some play in the pit and that music started up, I wanted to play through that game right then and there. But with the strong possibility of at least that campaign being remastered, it seems like I should wait and play through it then. The one COD game that makes a lot of sense for me to play would be World at War, because it's the only one I never played. It would be a blind playthrough, I have no idea what goes on in that game. And I got it on PC with the intentions of doing that a few years back, but ended up not having the time. I forget why that was, but maybe someday. As for other games outside of COD, very possible, you never know. I always think it'd be fun to play through some weird childhood games, but I also know that only sounds like a fun idea to me because of the memories I have of that game, and there are maybe seven other people who would want to watch that. How do I enjoy games that don't have a challenge system like Apex compared to games that do like COD? Yes, believe it or not, everyone, there are other reasons I can like games aside from challenge and achievement hunting. Although I'd say Apex is in the middle, even without a big formal challenge system, it has some elements of one. There were a few achievements to get, which I did, and you can hunt for the badges, which I admit I don't care about for the most part. But there was also the battle pass to grind through, and that hits on all the same addicting notes of completing and earning things, and that's present in almost every game. Like, I could be into Mario Odyssey and collect every moon. That isn't a challenge system, but it's 100%ing a game. You're right about Apex, though. The badges are not why I play it. It's that it's a fun game to play with friends. I like the gameplay loop. I think they made a lot of good decisions when it came to designing a BR game. The way that you can respawn teammates, that's massive when it comes to encouraging aggressive play. The god tier pinging system, I immediately miss it when going back to any other BR game. The looting being fun to keep looking for upgrades even though you don't need them to do well, that's balanced well. Same with the balance of shields versus health, the jump master thing, just a whole lot they did better that made it easily my favorite BR. But this question isn't about Apex specifically, it's really the playing with friends that makes a game like that fun for me. Something like CSGO is a better example of not having any challenges or unlockables to speak of, just your competitive rank, and I suppose some Steam achievements that are hardly related to the game that nobody cares about. I did them all anyway. Yet, without there being challenges and unlocks, I played quite a bit of it in my day. I had tons of fun learning it, improving. It's all about those moments where you can make that big play and feel like you were the hero. You work together, you get the win as a team. It's fun, but not something I would hop on and play alone. A game having a good leveling or challenge system, or a good gear unlocking system, having cool items to find and all that, that determines whether or not it's a game that I'll enjoy playing solo. It makes it something that I'm gonna want to hop on and grind whenever I can. I did play a little bit of Solo Apex to get through some tiers of the Battle Pass, but now that's done, so I'm back to having no real interest in Solo Apex. So those are the two main reasons I'd be into a game. The completionism, or fun with friends. I'd also have fun trying out a game with straight up fun mechanics, or playing through a great story, but I'd put those in different categories, not the type of game I'd be into for a long period of time. Are you going to play Operation 4? Unless that's the name of a game I don't know of, I think this is referring to Spectre Rising, because that hadn't even been announced yet back when this was commented, and in that case, well, no. I wasn't kidding when I said I was done with BO4. As I said back then, I wasn't looking for new content to get me back into BO4. Lack of content wasn't why I stopped. I've just played it a ton. I got my double hundred percent. I did everything I wanted to do. The trailer for the update was mildly interesting when it got to the blackout map changes. It is a cool content update that I would think is awesome if I were actively playing the game but I need a core motivation to be playing in the first place. In fact, to tie it back in, are there friends telling me to come play some Blackout? Nope. Are there challenges I want to hunt? Nope. So I haven't wanted to play it. I can't guarantee there won't be a BO4 update that will get me to care, but that has yet to happen. There's a mouse under my desk. What the fuck? I just see a little dark blob move in the corner of my eye. There's never been a mouse under my desk before. Goddamn. Is this what rural life is like? Oh shit, I was gonna take a video and he sped off into the garage.
Well, I gotta find this dude now. I gotta prove I'm not making this up. I can hear him squeaking around in there behind the shelving, but there's no way it's gonna be audible in the video. New plan, I've got this amazing trap built here. Uh, by that, I mean I was too lazy to make a good one with a bottle and all that. But I stacked up some cardboard, and there's this toilet paper roll with some peanuts that is teetering on the edge there. So if he walks in, the idea is that the whole thing falls into this pot. And the problem being, that probably won't happen. And even if it does, this pot isn't that big, and I imagine he'll have no problem jumping out of it. But I'm not going to fill it with water. I'm not going to try to drown him. Uh, I just want to see if this is going to lure him out at all. I want to see something happen. I heard some pitter-patter on cardboard behind me, and what do I see? He's actually up there. Where'd you go? Yep, there he is. Oh shit. Okay, got a problem. That dude just ran off to the left. Then I swear I saw one right here. Yep. What the hell, dude? How many are in here? Here in my garage, just got this uh, family of mice here. How are there multiple mice suddenly living in my garage? There isn't any food in here. I think he just ran outside and got around the garage door. Okay, so now I know how I got in here at least. Gonna just uh, hope that one doesn't come back. Okay, we can get back to what we were doing, I suppose. I'm sure this is a completely normal occurrence for many of you, but it's a new one for me, alright? I don't know that I've ever seen a wild mouse. I've seen coyotes, I've seen trash pandas, thousands of squirrels and chipmunks, and I've seen plenty of pet mice and pet rats even. Don't know about a wild mouse. Anyway, at least I proved I wasn't lying. I uh, will update next time on the mouse trap situation. Not gonna kill him, no worries there. Just trying to catch him. BO3 versus BO4 Dark Matter. Gonna go with BO3, keep it simple, the nice black and purple. The BO4 reactive stages of Dark Matter thing was a neat idea, and the spikes are pretty cool, but I'm not as big a fan of the red that you start out with, and I really could have gone without the blinding sun stage from 25 to 30 kills. That'd be good. Do you have any hobbies outside of gaming? Yeah, for sure. I wouldn't be a very interesting person if gaming and making videos was the only thing I ever did. First of all, I'd consider that to be the bigger hobby, the whole YouTube thing. I definitely put more time and energy into that than the playing games itself. As for other hobbies, I like teaching myself stuff on the piano. Nothing crazy, but I used to play as a kid. It was never that good, but I'd like to not completely lose what I had there. I could also consider cooking a hobby. It's fun to make good food, or more like it's fun to eat good food, so I'm willing to put in the effort to make something good. The cabinet full of bags of chips was a meme. I'll have you know I do in fact eat normal food. I don't care enough to be following 20 ingredient recipes though. More like I'll just be watching some Gordon Ramsay video and try to copy it. I'm not gonna bust out the measuring spoons though. If you measure things, you're kind of a bitch. Come on, just guess. Not that hard. So I don't know, I'd call myself decent at cooking. My family's always been a bit of a free-for-all when it came to food. I've bought groceries and cooked for myself for a decade or so now, so that part wasn't something I needed to adjust to when it came to moving out. I also took all the high school foods electives, because they were brain-dead easy, and you got to eat stuff. Can't say I learned anything I didn't know, except for the international foods class, that was cool. Aside from that, can't think of many other hobbies, unless you consider general self-improvement a hobby. I do like to stay in shape, try to not be a complete degenerate in front of the computer all day, but the gaming and the YouTube is definitely what I spend the majority of my free time doing. Do you think we could see some older nostalgia cards on the channel for fun and messing around? Well, sorry it took so long to get to this one. I guess it turns out the answer was yes, now that I've done some messing around with Modern Warfare 2. Aside from that, though, no plans for other COD games. What would be your opinion if we could make custom camouflage prints for our guns? I'd be indifferent. I rarely make use of the paint shop that we already have, but it would be cool if you could design a pattern and apply it to all your guns. Completely agree with that, even if it was still limited to a certain area on the gun. I know some people would come up with very nice looking creative camos. Other people maybe have other ideas in mind. But I'm happy as long as there's some differentiation when it comes to the weapon camos you can earn through gameplay, because that's a system I still enjoy, going for the gold. But it'd be easy enough to make some unique mastery camos that couldn't be replicated as a custom camo, so I'd be cool with them doing that. But I don't think it's something they'd want to do, because I imagine that would limit the camos that they could try to sell you, either directly or by filling supply drops with filler camos. They can't do that as easily if you could just make your own.
What is your version of a perfect microtransaction system? Well, kind of hard to answer because the perfect system is one that isn't there at all. As a consumer playing a game, the more content that's accessible to be earned and unlocked through gameplay, as opposed to paying for it, the better, right? But if there has to be a microtransaction system, then there are a few rules you should follow to make it not terrible, like pay to win is the first obvious problem, you should never have anything that impacts gameplay be locked behind RNG, or a massive amount of playtime that can be easily skipped by just paying. Anything like that either gives an unfair advantage to people who pay, or even if it doesn't, it devalues the accomplishment and the fun of trying to earn it through playing. Another good thing to do is to not be like Black Ops 4 and monetize in every way possible. If you're gonna charge 60 bucks for the game and 50 bucks for a season pass, don't have loot that works exactly like a free-to-play game with the crates and the loot streams to pay for, not even giving pass holders free access to that stuff. If I had to pick a COD that did it okay, World War II is the one that I always come back to that had a pretty fair system in my eyes. You didn't have to put in that much playtime to collect up plenty of drops and armory credits that you could use to directly unlock all the guns as well as whatever cosmetic stuff interested you. Also had contracts and other means of getting things you may have missed. And I don't remember anything being too overpowered. You never needed the new guns. The Volk was good when it launched, but it got toned down. But yeah, the perfect microtransaction system is the less the better. Alright, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.